Hebrews chapter 11. Good morning. Welcome to Calvary Chapel Inland, Devo 30. I'm Pastor Ruben. Thank you for joining us today. We stream live on Facebook every Monday, Wednesday, and Fridays. And if you'd like to see past uh, studies in Devo 30s, you can go to our YouTube channel, Calvary Chapel Inland, and you can see past uh, Devos there all the way back to uh, 2017, I believe. If you're in your neighborhood, come on by. Join us at 5383 Martin Street in Harupa Valley. Today we will be in the book of Hebrews, and we will be in chapter 11. Good morning, Patty. Glad you could join us. <clears throat> so let's go ahead and, and pray and ask the Lord to bless us. Heavenly Father, we come before you, Lord, and we pray in the name of Jesus that you would build our faith, Lord. Lord, that you would help us to understand the power and the blessings and the fruit that we will have if we have faith in you, Lord, in you alone. Father, you have called us to be children that surrender ourselves to you totally, Lord. So give us, Lord, understanding what that means to surrender ourselves to you, Father. And Lord, let it be done by faith, knowing that you love us, that you care about all the situations that we're in, the hurts and the pains, Lord, but you, you care so much that you know that these things will actually help us build our faith, will actually strengthen us in our weaknesses and bring a deeper understanding and intimacy with you, Lord. And so, Lord, there are things that we just don't get, we don't understand, but we need you, Lord, more and more to... Help us, Lord, in these areas so that we can have a strong Christian walk in this world, Lord. The only world that we have, the only walk that we'll, we'll live until we get home to be with you, Lord. And we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Sorry about that. Somebody messaged me and I pushed the wrong button and I went to the messengers. So, we're here again with all the shaky cameras as I'm trying to reset this. Thank you for joining us. We're in Hebrews chapter 11. Call this the Hall of Faith. Some of them calls it the Record of Faith, which I kind of like, the Record of Faith, not necessarily a Hall of Faith, but it's actually a record, isn't it? Of all the men and people in the Old Testament that have um, exercised their faith to the Lord. And the Lord has recorded their faith here in the scriptures. And by the way, he is continually recording uh, the, this record of faith for us. And who knows, uh, you might be in that recording someday when you get to heaven and see your, your name and the faith that you had in Jesus Christ. Now, as we go through this list, I want to just make one just observation. And I'm sure that you probably have already observed that. As you read about all of these individuals, you will not read their failures. You will not read how they sinned against humanity and against the Lord, ultimately being the ultimate sin is sinning against God. God isn't recording that. God is recording their faith in Jesus Christ and the steps that they take to exercise that faith. And Jesus looks at that faith because it's looked at through the righteousness of Jesus Christ and not at their flesh. Uh, I think that all of us could stand together and pick up stones uh, to cast them at someone, but I think that we'd also all realize that we uh, don't have, or we have sin in our lives also, and we'd have to drop those stones. He who has no sin cast the first stone. But we all have sin. We all have failed, whether it's visible sin or whether it's sin that's in our psyche even, in our hearts. We've all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. So God here records their faith, exercise faith, which uh, is encouraging for us because as we exercise our faith on a daily basis, he is recording those things also. So let's read this. It's a long chapter. So we will probably just read through it as much as possible and maybe stop as the Lord leads me through the Spirit, and we're trusting by faith that He will stop me at a point so that it ministers to one of you here in the church or 
someone that may be listening to it today or maybe even tomorrow or a year from now. Who knows? So here we go. <clears throat> the uh, record of faith. Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. For by it, the elders obtain a good testimony. Now, basically what uh, the writer is saying here is that hope is something that you don't see. We hope we hope to see heaven, but yet the substance of that faith is evidence. The word substance there is more, more like uh, facts, uh, uh, things that are clear, uh, that imply uh, certain truths, uh, certain hopes. For instance, uh, we know there is a God by the creation itself. Uh, no one has just uh, evolved, as, as some would say, but the Bible teaches that it was created by God himself, who being the creator, created man in his own image. And so there's enough evidence to give us the hope of these things. Our hope is not one that's a fairy tale. Our hope has facts behind it, history behind it. And so here's the evidence of those things and the testimony of those who have obtained this by faith. So verse three, by faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God so that the things which are seen were not made of things which are visible. So again, by faith, we know that the world was made by God. We just see it, it's very clear for those who have faith. By faith, Abel offered to God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain though, or through which he obtained witness that he was righteous. God testified of his gift, and through it he, being dead, still speaks. So how interesting that even though he's gone thousands of years later, that work of faith, that is to offer up a sacrifice that would make him righteous before God, is commended to him. And by faith, Enoch was taken away so that he did not see death, and was not found because God had taken him. For before he was taken, he had this testimony that he pleased God. Wow, by faith he just pleased God. He had a heart to please God. Um, he walked in this world and he walked in such a way that everything he did in his mind and his heart was to please God. How can I please you today, Lord? And we can apply so many different things uh, to that question, how can I please you today, Lord, in every situation that we find ourselves in? Uh, whether it's dealing with uh, spouses or children, or dealing with our governments, uh, or dealing with opportunities. You know, you can be in line and all of a sudden someone drops a $100 bill. How can I please you today, Lord? How can I reflect you by picking up that $100 bill and saying, excuse me, but you dropped this? and giving it back to the rightful owner that probably worked very hard for that $100 bill. That's the right thing to do. And then you reflect Christ in that. Oh, thank you so much. Don't thank me. Thank God, because I want to please him. And that's why I did that. But without faith, it says in verse 6, it's impossible to please him. For he who comes to God must believe that he is and that he's a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Mm, wow. We forget that, right? We forget that God is a rewarder. He's the rewarder. In, a, in other words, he gives us rewards for the things we do by faith. So by faith, we do Calvary Cares. By faith, we have ushers. That's by faith that we serve the Lord. By faith that we even give our tithe to the Lord. It's all by faith. And God is going to reward us for those things. Now you might say, like I would probably say, and have said in the past, When's my reward coming? <laughs> How come I haven't seen it yet? Why am I going through so many struggles? Because God is working things out in other areas of our lives. Our reward is ultimately coming in the end when we get to heaven and we stand at the beam of seat of Christ and he's gonna say, well done, good and faithful servant, enter into the kingdom of God and then he'll hand out the, the rewards that we will receive. So I tell you what, if you wanna please God, have faith and, and faith has works, right? James says that faith has works. If you have, say you have faith and yet you have not works, then you really don't have faith. I'm sorry, it's what the Bible teaches. You cannot have faith without works or works without faith. They work together and he makes that very clear. You can go around and say, I believe in Jesus Christ, but never live to please Jesus. You live to please yourself. 
You have a job like any other person has a job, but that job is there to meet your needs and your wants, not the Lord's wants. You don't give, you don't support, you don't help because it hasn't really changed you. Uh, you're there to use God like a genie in a bottle. Let me ask him to bless me, but then you never use those resources to bless anyone else. So faith has works. And works is evidence of your faith. And if you want to please God, then you have faith and works working together. And he'll reward you for those things. And we see that in the lives of these people, right? Look at Noah. By faith, Noah, being divinely warned of, all, of things not yet seen, moved with godly fear, prepared an ark for the saving of his household by which he condemned the world and became heirs of righteousness, which is according to faith. So by faith, Noah moved. God said, look, rain's coming, build a boat. Noah, Noah could have said, oh, I'm glad rain's coming, God. I'm sure you'll take care of us. He didn't. He said, you want me to build a boat? What's a boat? What's rain? I don't know, but I'm going to go ahead and do it by faith because you told me to do it and I want to please you. So there's Noah and everyone's mocking him and laughing at him. What are you doing, Noah? Rain? What is rain? What do you mean water coming? You're building this huge ark and getting animals? Noah, you're out of your mind. You're out of your mind. But he did it by faith and it was accounted to him as righteousness. By faith, Abraham obeyed when he was called to go out to the place which he would receive as an inheritance. And he went out, not knowing where he was going. And a lot of these men walked by faith, didn't know where they were going, didn't know what was going to happen. Um, guys, you might be in a church, and they might not tell you a whole lot what is happening. The reason is, is because they don't know a whole lot about what's happening. And they're just trusting God by faith and saying, Lord, do a work. And by faith, we're doing this. It doesn't mean that they have no direction. Oh, well, wait a minute. The scripture says that unless a man has vision, he shall perish. Yeah, our vision is, is that God would do the work. And we can have a vision. And the proverb says, you know, man uh, 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 makes his plans, but it's the Lord who numbers his steps. And so we have to understand that ultimately God is in control. And it doesn't mean that a church doesn't know what it's doing. As soon as a church begins to get smaller, people are like, oh, something's wrong with the church. They don't know what they're doing. Look, you don't have any faith. If you were just to exercise your faith and get involved, maybe that church wouldn't go under. So we have to exercise our faith. Abraham says, I'm going, Lord. I don't know where I'm going. I don't know what's there, but I'm going because you told me to go and I'm just going to have faith. By faith, he dwelt in the land of promise as a foreign as a foreign country, as in a foreign country, dwelling in tents with Isaac and Jacob, the heirs with him of, of the same promised. And he waited for the city which has foundations, whose builder and maker is God. By faith, Sarah herself also received strength to conceive seed, and she bore a child at 99 years old. And she bore a child because she believed in God. Now, when she was past the age, because she judged him faithful, who had promised. Therefore, from one man and him as good as dead were born as many as the stars of the sky in multitudes, innumerable as the sand which is by the seashore. <clears throat> so all by faith, they did these things. Heavenly hope, verse 13. Uh, these all died in faith, not having received the promises, but having seen them afar off, were assured of them, embraced them, and confessed that they were strangers in the pilgrims and pilgrims on the earth. So there were those who by faith did things, but they never saw the fruit of those things that they did. Uh, there's a lot of people who have done things and they won't see the fruit of it until later on when their ancestors uh, have produced that fruit. Abraham was one of those. For who, verse 14, for those who say such things declare plenty that they seek a homeland. And truly, if they had called to mind that country from which they had come out, they would have had opportunity to return. But now they desire a better, that is, a heavenly country. Therefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he has prepared a city for them. For by faith Abraham, when he was tested, offered up Isaac, and he who had received the promise offered up his only begotten son, of whom it was said, In Isaac your seed shall be called, concluding that God was able to raise him up even from the dead, 
from which he also received him in a figurative sense. So we get the interpretation of Genesis there where Abraham was offering up his son, that he did it by faith, knowing that God would resurrect him from the dead if he wanted to. So that's why he was willing to go through the sacrificing of his own son. And of course, we know he, that God stopped him. Uh, Abraham proved that he had faith in God and he stopped him at that last moment there. By faith, Isaac blessed Jacob and Esau concerning things to come. By faith, Jacob, when he was dying, blessed each of the sons of Joseph and worshiped, lead, uh, leading, le leaning on the top of his staff and then giving him his, his life up. Joseph, or Jacob was one of those that said, Lord, take my spirit. I commence my spirit unto you. And the Lord took his spirit. That's the way to go, is to be able to just be at peace with God and so in tune that it's, okay, Lord, I'm ready to go now. Take me home. And boom, God takes you home. Interesting story. Um, real quick, somebody I know, <clears throat> uh, a friend of theirs passed away and they were devastated from it. And this person is not a believer. They were more of a guru <clears throat> seeking the seeking oneness with and peace with the world. And apparently the person went away uh, and his time. So he was in his chair. He was, he was meditating and he just gave his spirit up to, to this oneness and unity. And this person is going around like, wow, what a way to go to finally be at one with the world. And they look at it, looked at it as a positive thing and looked at it as something that he was in total control of, that he was able to go further beyond the knowledge of this earth and go to the knowledge of, of whatever's beyond that, that he ultimately achieved the nirvana of, of ultimateness and oneness with everything. <clears throat> That's their, their false doctrine. And I thought to myself as they're sharing all of this, I thought, what a lie from the enemy, because it's a lie. The, and the enemy will give you what you want. And so if you want that, he'll give it to you. And then your eyes are opened up and you're standing before God and cast into outer darkness, because that's what the Bible teaches. Every other religious system is sinking sand. You, you compare it to the scriptures and there's only one way to heaven is through Jesus Christ alone. That's the truth of the Bible. And it's sad. Now I know there's a lot of people going, how do you know that? I just know. I believe it. I trust what the Bible says. You may not, and that's fine. We'll both find out when we get to heaven. <clears throat> and if I'm right, I get to go to heaven and you don't. If I'm wrong, then we both get to go wherever it is we go and we exist. You know, I do the best I can uh, <clears throat> helping and being there for people, feeding homeless, teaching people about God and do the best I can. And I may go somewhere where you don't go. Who knows? But if I'm right, you're in bigger trouble than I am. That's scary, guys. So by faith, Joseph, when he was dying, made mention of the departure of the children of Israel and gave instructions concerning his bones. By faith, Moses, when he was born, was hidden three months by his parents because they saw he was a beautiful child and they were not afraid of the king's command. Wow, they weren't really afraid. By faith, they actually put him in a basket and said, here, God, you're in control of his life. I surrender him to you. And they pushed him off. And we see what God, what God did through Moses. By faith, Moses, when he became of age, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh, choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the passing pleasures of sin. Wow, ra choosing. That's the active voice, right? This is the work that it, that's put upon him and he's choosing to do it. He chose to what? Suffer affliction. When you got saved, if God would have said, hey, are you choosing to suffer with us? You probably would have said, no, no, I came to get eternal life and have a better life. No, no, you're choosing to suffer because Christianity is, brings suffering and it's going to bring a lot more suffering in the future. So, so by faith, we have to say, Lord, I'm willing to suffer and, and I know that you'll give me the strength uh, to endure through that suffering and a way out. So he chose to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the passing pleasures of sin. Wow, what a contrast, huh? Esteeming the reproach of Christ, greater riches than the treasures in Egypt, for he looked to the reward. And that's where we need to look. Our faith should be looking to the reward that is to come. By faith, he forsook Egypt, not fearing the wrath of the king, for he endured as seeing him who is invisible. So by faith, he believed in him who's invisible, that is God just as we do today. By faith, he kept the Passover and sprinkled the blood. 
least he who destroyed the firstborn should touch them. By faith they passed through the Red Sea and by dry land, where as the Egyptians attempted to do so and were drowned. Isn't that an interesting contrast? By faith Moses was able to pass through the sea and the Egyptians had no faith, they, were, they drowned. Uh, when you battle against God, if you have no faith in that God, you're going to lose. You're going to drown. And a lot of people are drowning right now in their misery because they're not having faith. They're not trusting in God. <clears throat> By faith, uh, the walls of Jericho fell down after they were encircled for seven days. By faith, the, Ra the harlot Rahab did not perish with those who <clears throat> did not believe when she had received the spies with peace. That's an interesting story. Here's Rahab up there, and she heard about this Jehovah God and what God was doing with Israel, and she saw that they were there now at, at um, Jericho, and so by faith she believed that, that their, she believed in their God and believed their God would deliver her. And so the walls came down except for her room, and she was saved because she had faith in God. I tell you, if it seems like your walls are falling, and they may be falling around you, and life is difficult and hard, you have to, by faith, trust in God that he's going to give you a way out. We looked at that scripture that God uh, said, no, there's no temptation which is common to man, but he leaves us a way of escape. And that word of escape in the Greek means a, a path where your foot is on, but there's a path that you can move your foot. And God leads you to another path, a path of righteousness, instead of that path of temptations and trials and so forth. But it's him that leads you there. And you have to look for it and then surrender yourself by faith, trusting that he's leading that you out of that trial and temptation by faith. And so you have to have faith. You want to please God? Have faith. You want the victory of God and rewards of God? Have faith. It's all about faith. And what more shall I say? For the time would fail me to tell of Gideon, Barak, and Samson, and Jephthah, also of David and Samuel and the prophets. So this record is going on and he's writing about things. He says, what about Gideon who by faith took a small army and defeated the enemy? And Barak and Samson. Uh, you look at Samson's life and you go, how did he make this hall of records? How did Samson make the hall of records? You've got to be kidding me. Talk about a carnal man like the Corinthians, right? Wasn't Samson carnal? Everything was about him, right? It was about him gaining wealth, creating riddles, about him and his sexuality and women and concubines and was, was, was deceived by a woman. And then all of a sudden, at the very last, his heart truly was revealed when he called out to God and said, God, let me, let me truly serve you and by faith use me. And he pushed those pillars down and everything fell upon the Philistines. And he destroyed them by faith and became one of the judges. Interesting how that work of faith there, probably the only work of faith that he had uh, in keeping the Nazarite vow, which he broke, <clears throat> and yet God counted it as righteousness to him. See, it's never too late, guys. Don't allow the enemy to lie to you and say you're done with. You're not done with. Keep seeking God by faith. And by the way, interesting that he did this by committing suicide, right? It was pretty much a suicide. He was, a, he was like a suicide bomber. And he gave up his life uh, to be able to kill the enemy and free Israel from that bondage as a judge. So there's some, some interesting thoughts there to think about. Just observations. What is the proper interpretation application? Well, obviously, suicide is never the answer. But that is a sin like any other sin, and it's pardonable. Uh, God will receive you into heaven, <clears throat> but not a way to go. If you can, it's better to go by faith. And then it says in verse 33, who through faith subdued kingdoms, worked righteousness, obtained promises, stopped the mouths of lions, right? Daniel in the lion's den, remember that one? And not one lion touched him. That, that must have been amazing, amazing. I've, we've seen things like that, haven't we? YouTube, there, there's a picture, I just recently saw it again. But a little boy jumped into a, a, a cage in a zoo with a gorilla. And there he is in the water, and the gorilla came right around him and sitting right next to him and grabbing the boy with his hands and moving him here and there. And you're just going, wow, what 
that might have felt like for that little boy to be in the cage with this big girl. And this guy was big, you know, boom, 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 looking at him. And the people are screaming, just calm down, relax, relax. I don't know what the outcome of that was. I'm sure that someone came in with a tranquilizer gun and hopefully shot the gorilla, you know, without harming him, but saved the boy's life. But can you imagine being in the den of lions? And you're, you're thinking probably that's it. I'm, I'm gone. And that's probably what we all would think, right? That I'm gone. These lions are just going to consume me. They haven't eaten. They're hungry. And here I am. Meat. I'm not in the, the what is it, the chain of, what do they call that? Of uh, kings, I guess. I don't know what that chain, that chain of man eaters. The lion's on top, right? And we're not on the top there. Uh, we should be, on, we're probably on the top if we have the right weapons, you know, and so forth. But when you're thrown in like that, and yet Daniel, Lord, you're more than able to save me out of this. And by faith, I believe. And so God just somehow quenched the hunger of those lions and Daniel was saved through that. Now we read that story, right? And we think that's not true. There's, there's no way that can happen, right? <clears throat> It seems humanly impossible, but with God, nothing's impossible. God can do anything. And there's, been, there's some testimonies out there that are pretty amazing when you see what God has done truly in this world. So you have to believe it by faith. So he stopped the mouths of lions, quenched the violent fires, escaped the edge of the sword out of weakness, were made strong, becoming vigilant in battle, turned to flight, the enemies of the aliens. I think of David's mighty men and the faith they had in God and how they would hold on to their sword as they're battling and killing thousands and tens of thousands in the name of, uh, of God, you know, in behalf of David and his mighty valiant men. And it says that in their weaknesses, God gave them the strength. And then in battles, they were vigilant and they were rulers and mighty men of God. It's, I love the part where it says that they couldn't, they couldn't take the sword out of their hands because their hands were so tightly wound about it, they were stuck. There, that's how fierce the battle was, and God gave them victory by faith. Verse 35, women received their dead, raised to life again. Others were tortured, not accepting deliverance, that they might obtain a better resurrection. Now he threw that in, right? Because uh, we have to realize... That just because we have faith and trust in God doesn't always mean that we're going to survive through the trial. And, and when you think about this, there were some that were tortured and they had the faith enough to say, torture me till I die. That's okay, because I know I'm going to a better place. And they walked into heaven as they were being tortured, like Stephen being stoned, Lord, forgive them. Forgive them, Lord, they don't know what they're doing. And Jesus stands up and receives them into his very presence. That, my friends, cannot be done in the power of our own flesh and strength. It is only done by the power of the Holy Spirit. And so this is why we have to create a prayer pattern. Praying that God would give us strength. Praying that God would help us through the situation. Praying in everything with supplication. Making our thanksgivings made known unto the Lord. Thanksgiving and supplication and making our request made, made known to the Lord. So that when we're in that situation, we go to prayer and God gives us the power uh, to accept, not accept the deliverance, that we would receive a better resurrection. Still others had trials of mocking, scourging, yes, and of chains and imprisonment. So again, another reason why I think that Paul wrote this is because he was in prison, he was chained. So he's making a reference here uh, to himself also. They were stoned. That could be Stephen. They were sewn in two, uh, were trampled on, were slain with a sword. They wandered about in sheepskins and goatskins, uh, being destitute, afflicted, tormented. Uh, they would, the, the Roman Empire would literally have games and they would put Christians within animals. They would, they would take the animal skins and, and put Christians in there and throw them out in the den so that the other animals would consume them. Of whom the world was not worthy. They wandered in deserts and mountains and dens and caves of the earth. And all these having obtained a good testimony through faith. The testimony through faith, guys. The testimony that we have must be obtained through faith. Did not receive the promise. God having provided something better for us. That they should not be made perfect apart from us. What a great chapter this is. And a great encouragement for us to be reminded that we should be children that walk by 
faith. Isn't that encouraging? So everything we do has to be done by faith. And we have to believe what God is going to do. So the next time someone challenges you, you're not going to be able to do that. Yeah, I know, I can't. You're right. i got to do it by faith. It's got to be through Christ Jesus. Um, otherwise, you're defeated. So let us put our faith in God. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for your precious word. And we pray, Lord, today that you would help us to see that you're building our faith, Lord, through the trials that we're going through. And Lord, let us also see that there's deliverance, and it's by faith, Lord. And Lord, let us rejoice and give you praise and glory when you deliver us because it will be your, your deliverance, Lord. And Lord, for some of us, maybe we're going through cancer. Maybe we're in a situation that's life-threatening. By faith, Lord, let us, let us not give in to it, Lord, but trust, Lord, that there will be a better resurrection for us, Lord. Lord, help these words resonate in our hearts and in our soul, and let the Holy Spirit bring it up in time of need, Lord, that we are to be people that walk by faith, Lord. We pray for this church that it would be by faith that we serve him, Lord, by faith that we give to him, Lord, by faith that we continue to march forward, Lord. We're going to trust in Jesus Christ, Lord. Forgive us of our sins and lack of faith, Lord, and build faith in us, Lord. It's a measure of faith. A faith comes by hearing and hearing of the word of God. And today, the word of God has built our faith, Lord. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Thank you for joining us. Uh, hopefully, we'll see you on Friday at 9 a.m. here at the church or watch us on Devo. Check out our YouTube channel for other studies. God bless you. Have a wonderful uh, day.